So the lesson that we were doing today was kind of a bridge lesson in Go Math. We're in chapter nine, which deals with functions and looking at graphing. So there were a couple steps to this that we did today. We worked with read two ways kind of strategy at the beginning where we set up the problem. We read that, we discussed that, they looked in partners, talked about that a little bit, and this was kind of bridging that gap. So they have a context to what's going on here and it's not just plotting numbers. So that's why we brought in the idea of this bridge of using the tomato and jalapeno perfect salsa recipe. Okay, it is made from five tomatoes and three jalapenos. How can we make sure when we make bigger batches that the recipe tastes the same? So with a problem like this where kids can grapple with this is a perfect kind of problem to bring in some of these different strategies so that kids understand the context of the problem. They understand what the numbers are. They're not just stabbing at numbers like, you know, okay, what do I do with the five and three? Maybe I add them, maybe I subtract them. I don't know, but I do something, right? It helps build that context for them. And then having them work in partners helps them deepen that understanding a little bit more. Since they have more tomatoes, that either means they wanted more tomato taste or the jalapenos are really strong. And so you want to even them out, and that's how they even out them out perfectly with five and three. Yeah. With starts, I had them just pause for a minute before they had finished, and I brought some of them up to the document camera. And while they were working, I had gone around, and I had strategically kind of looked at what they were doing. And, you know, it's always amazing what kids do because it's not necessarily what I think they're going to do. But, you know, there were some very specific problems that I called out that led us in our discussion to the end goal that I wanted to get, which was graphing. So if we were making two batches, it would be 10 tomatoes and six jalapenos. For part of the lesson, they were using these uh, linker cubes. So they would put out one linker cube when they proposed an idea, and then another student would build on it with their color if they had an answer, if they had a question, or they had another you know, thought about that. And then that went back and forth. And they might even start a second tower of cubes if they kind of went down a different avenue of thinking. And it's kind of a neat way for them and for me to see what their thinking is and how they're working as partners. To get your answer for this, well, you all also have to look back at here, see if uh, which one would be closest to one of these. So as the lesson progressed, we went more into them looking at different ways to show how you could increase the salsa recipe without changing the flavor. And then some students on their own decided, hey, we could graph this, you know, and then it formed a line. Now that wasn't something I told them, that was something they discovered. So I first made the table because I, I was thinking, well, this could help me figure this out easier than just doing multiplication. So I just did that for all of these and then I graphed them right here using the numbers I needed. Usually at the beginning of a lesson like this one, you know, we pose a problem that they have to grapple with and they have to think about. It's not just something that's obvious. And so when students have the ability to talk to one another about it, they see other ideas not just my preconceived idea, and I see other ideas, not just my preconceived idea. To make it equal to the perfect mix, which is five to three, it has to be 20 tomatoes to 12 peppers. Okay, so what should I write here? 12, so you'd have to add 11 to that one. Oh, okay, we've got to add some here. Okay, close that. Is that what you're thinking? Mm -hmm. You know, I've taught for many years, more years than I want to mention, and I think beforehand I was a pretty traditional teacher, and I felt like I was doing a good job teaching math, and I feel like this has really opened my eyes to all the things that we weren't doing, you know, years ago. There's a huge change in the students that I would call math-phobic, right? The ones that we all know these kids, right, that just say, you know, I can't do math, math is not my thing. And, uh, you know, many people have commented, gosh, we don't have kids that are social studies phobic, right? We have, but we have kids that are math phobic. They just have this idea that they can't do it. And I feel like having kids do discourse and having kids show multiple solutions, having kids see how other kids, you know, solve them, opens that door for them to really be able to find their own entry point into math. 